All right. So that is a slide. What I'm going to draw here is a slide you already have in your uh, in your presentations. But what what I want to do is just explain it step by step. Okay. So what we have here is a graph. I create this graph. Okay. Of a reaction. And the energy level of, these rea of this reaction as it goes on. So that's the start of the, the reaction, and here is the end of the reaction, right? So it's time, say, time equals zero, and then here I would have time equals, you know, I don't know, 10 seconds after it started, and then it's done. Okay, so just we, we have like the reaction here, it's like you could think about it as time. And what we have here is an e energy level. <coughs> so, <coughs> say that I have my box, and in that box I have that triangle opening, and then I have my triangle shaped block here that I would like to draw inside that box. Okay? Um, in order to do this, I need to provide a little bit of energy. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to take that block and I'm going to manipulate it and look at it and orient it in the right way so that it fits there. I could let it fall if I wanted, but if it falls in, well, one time out of a thousand, it's going to actually get in. But all the other times, it's just going to bounce off the box and never get in. All right? So. What I want here is that I have energy levels that are stored in my molecules. Okay? If I have a spontaneous reaction, which means that the delta G of this is actually a negative value, spontaneous, which means that the energy levels of the substrates, what is going to, to uh, react. So the reactants the energy level of re the reactants are higher than the energy levels of whatever is left after the reaction, which are called the products. Okay? So there is actually a difference in energy that can be measured right here. And that difference in energy is delta G. The difference between this and this is a delta G. Okay? Now, we would think that a reaction would be going like this, right? It's spontaneous. It just gets transformed from one form to the other one. Say A is now transformed into B. So we have A right here, A, and then we have B right here. And we know that the internal energy of the molecule B is lower than the internal energy of the reactant A because it's a spontaneous reaction. Everybody following me here? Okay? You need to remember what is what? You need to think, okay, what is the final product? What, what is the final uh, energy level of the product and all of that? You need to remember that. If, if you don't right now, which is totally possible and it's not stupid in any way, but you need to go back to your notes and check that. Because if you don't understand this now, you're not going to understand this on exam day. Okay? You're not. So you need to go back and make sure, and if you don't, if it's blurry, well, you come to the office hours, or you call me, or you send me an email, and we meet, and I explain this, and then, oh, that's it, I get it, we're done. Perfect, thank you, all right? So coming back to my reaction here, we would think reactions go like that. Well, actually, they don't. They don't go like that, right? Say that you want to, to, uh, to light a match. Is lighting a match something spontaneous when you rub it against the the box, right? It just goes. Right? It just goes just like that. Flame. But that's not spontaneous. The match cover 
match, little cover here, wants to get inflamed, but it won't by itself. Thank God. <laughs> okay. We need to provide a little bit of energy so that the reaction can actually go after. We need to rub it. So by doing so, we provide a bit of energy, and from that point here, the, the match lights up and then burns. Okay? The energy here between this part here and the top right there, this here, is called activation energy. It's like being a roller coaster and hearing tick, 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 and the anxiety level goes up and up and up and up and up until you're at that point here where the roller coaster almost stops, lets you look down to just frighten you a little bit more, and then you go. That's spontaneous, right? No push involved. You just gravity pulls you. The same thing here, right? That match that we want to light, we just rub it, we give it a little bit of energy, and then it lights by itself. No need to do anything after that. That's the activation energy. That's a concept of that. So I think you understand that. Enzymes are wonderful machines. Enzymes are proteins. And I'll explain that after. Enzymes are proteins. Enzymes are not alive. Okay? I heard that once. Okay, enzymes are a bunch of little things that are alive. They're not. They're just proteins. They don't live. And what they do here is this. Something wonderful. They decrease the activation energy that is required. Here we have in black, we have without enzyme. And here, I have my blue pen. Here in blue, right here, we have with enzyme. Without and with. The enzyme does this. It decreases the activation energy, but the energy levels in both A and B are unchanged. The delta G of the whole reaction is unchanged. The only thing that is changed is the activation energy here. That's all that is changed. It's the only thing. Okay? So it takes less energy here. I heard once, and I never looked if, to, to know if, it, if that was possible or not. I don't know if this claim is true. But somebody once said, a hamburger would eventually get digested with acids and whatever we have in our stomach. But it would take, I don't know if that's true, you know, 10 days or something like that. Of course, we digest our food very quickly. Okay. Because why? Well, we have enzymes. So enzymes, by reducing this activation energy, allow reactions to happen much, much, much faster than they, they nor normally would. That's what it does. Okay? It doesn't do anything else but decrease the activation energy. So you would have something like this. A gets transformed into B. We have that here. And we have an enzyme that gets in the picture here. So A, at the beginning, at time equals 0, we only have, so at time equals 0, we have A. And at time equals x minutes or seconds, time after, we only have B. In this case here, we have A plus an enzyme that we put in, and then at time B, at time 
X and F after, we have B plus the enzyme. The enzyme do, does not take place in the reaction. It does not react with A. It's just there so that it happens. Okay? Just to give you a little story, quickly, okay? You have two people, two little kids. It's a kid's dance at school on a Friday night, okay? And Jim and uh, Jill, okay, are very, very shy. They're eyeing each other from the corner. They would like to talk to each other, but they actually won't because they don't know what other people are going to think, and they don't know if going to be rejected and all that. So they just don't want to do it. So they're looking at each other and not really paying attention, but actually they are. Until somebody very nice notices that and brings Jim and Jill together and say, hey, Jim, this is Jill. Hey, Jill, this is Jim. You know, and Jill is a very good dancer, and uh, Jim actually likes to do, you know, skateboarding. What do you like to do, Jill? Tell to Jim. Okay, and then they start talking, and then they are friends. And the person did this, right, and then walk away, right? So energy activation was way too high to happen. No way I'm not going to talk to Jill or Jim. Person comes, decreases the, the anxiety, decreases the energy required for the reaction, brings the two little kids together, and then smiling away, just walks out. And then these two little kids are now friends forever. And 25 years later, they are and have five kids. OK? <laughs> All right? So that's what, that's what enzymes do. They bring this, which does not mean in any way, that's my final word for this video, which does not mean that the energy, the activation energy, is actually nil. It does not bring this to zero. The two reactants still need to get close to each other, and we'll see how that works. They still need to react. So there's still this little gap here, but it's not as high. And that helps our reactions a lot. No enzymes for us, no life. Life impossible. Okay? Nothing we do right now is possible without enzymes. Yes. Where does the X come in in the graph? The X here, uh, X here? Yeah. It's just the time. So I said here 10 seconds, right? But at like X seconds, right? It's just time. It's nothing really. Oh, it's okay. just a, you know, it's between, it's at, at the end when the reaction stops, that time equals x. That's what it meant. Sorry if I'm confusing you with this, but I think you get it. Okay?